we are going to integrate x times cosine of x to the third power dx as an infinite series. In this case, unfortunately, none of the integration techniques that we have done in the past will work, but it's okay, because now the strategy is, we will first come up with an infinite series for this, and then integrate that infinite series. But before we do so, we have to first remember what is the infinite series for cosine. And let me put it down right here. We have to know that cosine x, this is equal to, and I will just put it down in the sigma notation form. So this sigma for n goes from 0 to infinity. And this is how I remember the series for sine and cosine. Both of the sine and cosine, they are alternating. So I will have the negative 1 to the nth factor. And then cosine x, it's an even function. We are going to divide it by the even factorial and also have the x to the even power. So we will first look at this and then divide it by 2n, which is the even numbers. And then we'll put this in the parentheses and then we have the factorial. And then we will have the x to the 2n power, the even power right here. For sine x, you will have 2n plus 1 and 2n plus 1. The rest stays the same. All right. So this is what we have to remember. And now we are going to come up with the infinite series for that. So let me do it right here. x times cosine of x to the third power. We have to get an infinite series for this first, cosine of x to the third power. But this is pretty easy because I can just plug in x to the third power into this x, likewise to this x, right? Let me maintain this x in the front first. And then for this part, we will have the sigma notation. So let me put it down here. This is the sigma notation where n goes from 0 to infinity. And then we still have the negative 1 to the nth power over 2n factorial. And for this x now, it becomes the x to the third power. Open the parentheses and then put in x to the third power and then raise that to the 2n's power. And we can simplify this a little bit before we put it back. And we will. So let me focus on this part first. This is still sigma where n goes from 0 to infinity. This part stays the same. Negative 1 to the nth power over 2n, and then we have the factorial. And x to the third power raised to the 2n power. Of course, we will have multiplying the powers. 3 times 2n, we have 6n. So this is x to the 6n. But then we have this x all the way in the front, right? We could have distributed the x and multiplied it right here together. This is x to the first. Multiply with this, then that means we have uh, x to the 6n plus 1. So this is the infinite series for that. All right, now we come back here. We are going to just integrate. This is that. We will integrate in the sigma notation. So this is sigma where n goes from 0 to infinity. And you can see this is the negative 1 raised to the nth power over 2n factorial x to the 6n plus 1. And we have the dx right here. Right, and now the question is, how can we integrate this? First of all, we are doing an integration, and usually at the end we have the plus c, right? But in this kind of situations, we first put down the c plus. We put down the constant first. And to integrate this, it's not bad at all. We just focus on the x and then the power. We are just going to do the reversed power rule. To do so, we add 1 to the exponent, and you see, this is 6n plus 1 plus 1. So of course, that's 6n plus 2. That's a new exponent. We just have to divide that right here. So we divide this right here, 6n plus 2. And that's the answer, pretty much. And we will have the sigma, where n goes from 0 to infinity. We maintain that. Negative 1 to the nth power over, we have this in the denominator as well, 6n plus 2 and multiply by parentheses 2n factorial, and then we multiply by the x to the 6n plus 2 power, and then at the end, we also have to include the radius of convergence of this infinite series, right? And let's take a look of cosine x. We know this right here has r equals to infinity, and then for x times cosine of x to the third power, what we did was we plug in x to the third power into cosine, and then after that, we multiply by x. I can also tell you this right here 
r is also infinity. At the end, when we integrate that, the r stays the same. So the answer right here, we will also have r is infinity. You can also do a ratio test on this real quick, but then you see that we have the factorial in the denominator. That will give you r is infinity most of the time. But anyways, this is it.